A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part 72. Drilling the saddle tank mountings to the correct depth using a simple method. Threading the holes 2BA and making a water bypass return pipe which will require a support bracket. These are the original holes that are drilled and threaded for the saddle tank's mounting bracket bolts. Originally I drilled these holes using a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill in a Proxon motor tool because my larger drill at the time had a flat battery. And because these holes were 1 8 of an inch in diameter I went into autopilot mode and threaded them 4BA. Now I'm correcting that problem by drilling the holes tapping size for 2BA and tapping the holes 2BA. It is really important that I do not drill these holes all the way through the block into the tank. I'm currently checking the depth using my scriber point. And now it's top tip time. To make sure each of these holes are exactly the same depth, all I'm doing is fitting a piece of copper pipe over the drill bit which will not allow the drill bit to penetrate any deeper than the amount you see. The good thing about this method is nothing is required in the way of measurement. As you've just seen, I poked the scriber into the existing holes, made sure that the drill bit was fully pushed into the chuck. The length of the drill bit sticking out of the copper tubing is exactly the same as the length of the scriber point that went into the original holes. I hope you understood that. Holding the drill steady is quite difficult, but in the end I did get there and I ended up with four holes all drilled to exactly the same depth. Thanks to the piece of copper tubing not allowing the drill bit to penetrate any deeper. In this part of the clip I'm just double checking the depth. Automatically I wipe away the swarf with my thumb and this is never a good thing to do. For the next part of the job I'm threading the hole 2BA. I'm using a second tap. This is a tap with a taper but not quite as much a taper as a taper tap. Brass is quite a soft metal and very easy to thread so it doesn't need the original taper tap just a second does the job. Here though I'm putting the plug tap in. This is known in the USA as a bottoming tap so I can get right to the bottom of the hole. As a general rule when you start to get near to the bottom of the hole, the brass starts to squeak, which gives you plenty of warning to stop turning the tap. If you haven't done much threading using taps, I recommend that you practice on some scrap metal first. It's not quite as easy as I make it look. You have to know just how much pressure to put on the tap without snapping it off. I can say this with confidence because in my time I have snapped off plenty of taps in holes. What I'm doing here is using my compressed air line to blow away any swarf from within the holes. And here I'm using quite a large twist drill to deburr the hole. The last thing I want in this area are burrs on the edges. This is followed by using the air line again to blow away any chippings. The final part of this job is to just check that the bolts do fit and that they all stick out the same amount from the brass mounting blocks inside the tank. In this episode I am going to be a little bit pedantic. That's one side done, now it's time to do the other side. In exactly the same way as I've just shown, so I will speed up the video. I should use this copper tube method more than I do. I would normally use some silicone rubber tubing over the drill bit, but that can be compressed so it's not as accurate as a piece of copper tubing. And once again I use two taps in each of the holes. A second tap to start the job off and a bottoming tap, or as we call it over this side of the pond, a plug tap. To be honest, I don't break too many 2BA taps, but smaller taps than this are very easy to break. I must admit that 10BA is my absolute limit, and usually I do get problems threading these small sizes. Some model engineers are quite incredible. There's one particular model engineer who's quite famous who can tap using 12BA taps. I just don't get that at all. 
Owing to advancing years and poor eyesight, I cannot even see a 12BA bolt or a 12BA nut. Luckily, with the sort of jobs I do, the smallest tap size I normally use would be 8BA. And I can cope with that OK. On this saddle tank there are three connectors. The top two are for the water pipe and the other one is for the water bypass pipe. This is used to let the water back into the tank instead of going into the boiler by using a water bypass valve. However, I feel the need for a pipe inside the tank so I can look down the filler hole and see the water coming back into the tank or not depending on the position of the water bypass valve. I soldered this coned union onto a piece of quarter of an inch diameter copper pipe. Then I cut the pipe and bent it into the shape that you see here. It's important to be able to see the water coming back into the tank by looking down the centre hole in the saddle tank. I can't leave it like this though, it will need some kind of a support and I'll make that in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.